Hello and welcome to Alexander Rosso's Arc for Dummies. I'm helping you in this series working out how to get started in Arc and developing your base from a little thatch hut right up to that PvP base later on. In the first episode we tackled how to build your first hut. Um, in this video I'm helping you to realise where to step on uh, from, th from there. And then to start off with I'm going to teach you how to gain some levels early on quite quickly because you want to level up your character as fast as possible to get those stat points so you can carry a lot of items survive and also craft some of the more useful items in the game that being said let's get started Dave go inside and keep the place safe for us while we were at work. Right, in the last video I told you I really wanted storage boxes. Well, I wanted storage boxes not just to keep my stuff in, but to help me level up. Storage boxes are quite cheap to make, and early on they level you up quite quickly. Quicker than most things. So now I've got my thatch hut, I want to get some levels to unlock some more fun things. One of those things being narcotics. Once you've got narcotics, that's when taming can start getting interesting. Although, I advise not trying taming until you've unlocked tranquilizer arrows, which is a fair bit later, and I will probably cover that in another video. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I've got plenty of fiber. For a box you need fiber, wood, and thatch. So that's a fair bit of fiber there. Now to get myself some thatch. I've still got my settings set to basic for the sake of this video to show you how it is, but I'll probably be changing those settings in my next video as to make my videos a little bit faster and easier to follow. As I said in my last video, these settings can be changed depending on what server you're on, or if you're playing on your own, you'll do that you can find that in your single player settings. If you'd like me to do a video covering single player settings, leave me a comment in the in the, in the link in this uh, leave me a comment to this video and I'll get on to that. If there's anything that you you want to see me cover in any of my videos, please leave me a comment and I will read them and I will see if I can faci facilitate that. You'll see Oh, it's disappeared now. But on the bottom right corner, there was a character, a picture of a character, a man bent over. That meant I was tired. If I carry on doing stuff while tired, I could eventually knock myself out from exhaustion. Got myself a fair bit of thatch now. Just the wood to go. Bear in mind, any resources that you cut down, pick, or mine that are next to a structure will not respawn. So if you really like the factual houses in the tr in is in the middle of a bunch of trees, leave those trees alone. Because if you come down, they're not going to respawn. That being said, if you do happen to accidentally cut down a tree that you really like, all is not lost. There is a way to regrow it, but that again is a is something you learn later on. Right now, I'm going to use up this level I've gained to show you that about gaining levels from doing this method. I'm now currently level 7. At level 7 that's given me access to spyglass, single panel flag, standing torch and a simple bed. Now, although being all these items are always useful in their own right, only a certain amount of them are useful right now. I will craft a simple bed. Because having a simple bed means if I die, I can respawn at where the bed is, preferably in my base. By using that though, I'm unable to get anything else. So sadly, I won't be getting narcotics just yet, or the spyglass. The spyglass is a very useful tool, but you'll find you may not be able to craft it for quite a while, as it uses a resource called crystal, which is difficult to get hold of straight away in the game. Now I've got my materials, and I already locked storage, unlocked storage box. Let's craft it. So that'll be in structures wood so sorry 
because uh, in the last episode I used um, creative mode, it's unlocked the engrams for me. I've turned creative mode off for this video, but it's still unlocked them, and it will it'll be so until I die. So I'm just going to quickly kill myself. Be aware, if you ever attack a dinosaur, there's a good chance it will retaliate, as the brontosaurus did. Usually a brontosaurus is passive, and it won't attack you unless provoked. That being said, if you ever see one of these passive dinosaurs running away or attacking, that means there's a good chance there's a predator nearby, so you may want to choose to avoid that area. Or with the bronto, it has a very wide swing, and you don't want to be clipped by it when it's actually trying to attack something else. Now, when you die, you can find your body by this green line coming out of the sky. It's very visible, and that will direct you to where you are. You can then access it by pressing E or F getting and get your stuff. First of all, I'm going to get rid of these. As I said before in my last video, every time you die and respawn, these come back. So you can find yourself with an entry full of them, and I don't actually want them right now. I then will press these this image of two arrows which transfers everything that was in my inventory over. You can use this on dinosaurs or whatever just to quickly transfer everything. Now I've got all of that, why not put my dead body to good use and get myself some meat. That's right, self cannibalism. Some things in Ark are a little bit brutal as a, as a little bit of a disclaimer. We're going to cook that food, so it'll be nice and tasty. You'll see, in my last video, I set this campfire to cook food for me. I've got some cooked meat now, but I also have charcoal from when the, where that wood has been burning. Charcoal has no use to me right now, but later on it is rather useful, so I will keep it. I will now put this meat in here. If at all possible, you don't want to be throwing away items, because every item has a use. Sometimes you will have no choice though. Right, now we'll get crafting those boxes. In wood, and then in storage, you'll find boxes. And as you'll see, it is very cheap to make, it being only 10 fibre, 20 thatch, and 25 wood. Now I'm going to click A on that. A makes me craft as many of that item as I physically can. It will use up all my materials to to craft as many of them as I can. I can craft six at the moment. As you'll see down here. If you accidentally do this and you want to stop, you can stop, although it won't stop the one that's already started, so you, you'll always lose at least one bit of materials. I do actually want to craft all of these, so we'll, I'll let that continue. Why it's crafting, you'll notice that you walk quite slowly. Although if you're on top of a on top of a tame while crafting, it doesn't actually affect it. Now I've crafted those six boxes, let's put some of them to use. Three should do for now as I don't have many materials. And I'll put some of the materials that I want to keep for later in here. But I don't need right now. So there's my seeds for when I make a farm, narca berries when I want to make some tranquilizer, and the charcoal for much later on when it makes gunpowder. I'll cover gunpowder in a much later video. I'll keep everything else on me, except this specimen implant from my dead body. That is actually useless. Some people like to keep specimen implants of characters they defeat as trophies, but that's up to you. Right. That Now that's done, I've still got boxes left over. So depending on your server and how difficult it is to get resources, because sometimes it can be quite tough, you may want to just build it and destroy it. So you get some of those materials back. That being said, you do not get all of them back. By 
enough, they're getting something back. I was able to craft another one. Now, in the bottom right corner, you'll see there's a picture of, a, of an arrow with a plus on it. You'll see that the arrow is almost filled in. That is your experience bar. That shows you how close you are to leveling up. So the far, as soon as that fills, that means I'm going to gain another level. I'm able to craft another box from destroying those boxes. But if you are on a server where you get materials quite quickly, you may just want to dump, dump the boxes to save time. That is up to you. Once again, I'm just going to have a quick look to see what I'm short of. I've still got lots of thatch and I've got lots of fibre. It's the wood that I seem to be going through the fastest. So, I'm just going to focus on getting myself a lot of wood for now. Because I'm doing this purely, purely to level up, I'm going to get as much wood as I can. But I've just noticed that there is a Diplosaur. He is a dangerous dinosaur. And at my current level, I'd rather not fight him if at all possible. He will kill me if he sees me. He also spits a, a substance on you which blinds you, which can be a real pain. It is possible to kill one of them at this level, mind. They're not too difficult. And with training, you can dodge you can dodge the spit attacks quite easily. But sometimes it's not worth the risk, especially if you are brand new to the game. Even a Diffusor can ruin your fun. As I said before, I'm just going to gather as much wood until I can't move anymore. You'll notice I've levelled up also from just gathering. You level up, you gain experience from various things. You gain it from crafting, killing or gathering. I've now gathered as much as possible. I'll spend that level point on the weight. That now puts me at level 8. At level 8, I learn Wooden Club. I'm unlocking Wooden Club because I'll be using that to get some tames later on. It's much better than using your fist for knocking out dinosaurs. And I don't unlock Tranquilizer Arrow until much later on. You also get multi-panel flag, compass and a cooking pot. I must admit, I don't really use the compass that much, so I won't be getting that. And the cooking pot, I don't use it often either. Sometimes for making dye, but it's not entirely necessary right now, as cooking meat is plenty good enough. Really, the things I want to be focusing on, I will want to get narcotics soon. But I've noticed on the next level, I'm going to get this item. This is a boller, and that is very, very useful in your game. It's an item that, once you build it, you can throw it at a dinosaur, tying up its legs, enabling it not to move. But be warned, this only works on the smaller dinosaurs, like the Diphosaur. But it would not work on that Brontosaur. Nor would it work even not on a Triceratops, as that's a medium-sized dinosaur. I've now got as many mats as I can. I'm going to press A on boxes again. This time, I'm able to craft eight. Now, you're, you would have noticed that my arrow bar I can just, there we go. You'll notice that my arrow bar just over here, before I started crafting boxes, it was right down at the bottom. And as I craft each box, it goes up by a fair amount. As I said before, this is quite a good way of leveling quite early. But there's nothing wrong with just building more thatch, building supplies, perhaps making your base bigger. But I'm quite content with my 3x3 three three thatch box. It may not be pretty, but it's functional for now. Okay, I haven't gained to that other level just yet, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to take a guess that I need more wood. Because when I looked at my materials, the fibre I had and the thatch I had seemed rather large. Oh, I spot another dodo. Try and, at this early on, if you see a dodo, try and kill it. Because you're going to want that hide pretty soon. Because as soon as you unlock bollers, you need them. There's another dodo here. So I'm going to kill him before harvesting that one. So I know he doesn't get away. There we go. Remember to use your hatchet to get the hide. 
Pickaxe for meat, hatchet for hide. You still get a little bit of um, meat, just not as much. Over there is a Diflosaur, and you'll see it's fighting the smaller dinosaur, which is a Compi. Compies are also dangerous. They'll approach you first and may not start attacking, and you might find a few of them. They look cute and innocent to begin with, but trust me, they will start attacking you once the rest of their buddies have arrived. And as a group, they can be a rather, they can be a real nuisance. But like most dinosaurs, if you find them a nuisance, just think. Other people probably find them a nuisance too. So perhaps later on, once you've learned taming, you can use that to your advantage. Through gaming in Ark, you'll find there are many creatures that are just particularly annoying. Diflosaurs, Microraptors, Trodons are a list of a few of them. I'll do videos covering these particular dinosaurs, how to tame them in later videos. I would say that a particular favourite of mine, which is probably not tamed that often, is something called the electric eel. The electric eel, if you ever go into the water, into the deep waters, you'll find is the thing that probably scares you the most. It's not the Mosasaurs, which is one of the largest creatures out in the sea, or the Megalodons, which are the main predator out there. It's definitely the electric eels, because they paralyse you. You get stunned, it's... It, it stuns you, it stuns your dinosaur, and there's not much you can do about it. And normally it, it renders you in a slow, painful death. And they they attack in swarms, a bit like the compies. There you go, I've now leveled up. I was only one box away, how about that? So that is levelling up quite quickly now. Once this box is crafted, as I said before, I can place them and reuse the materials if I want. Or if I'm on a server that has a fair amount of materials, I can just dump them. Like so. I can then use those, um, those points to level up a bit more. You'll notice I'm putting all my stats into weight at the moment. That's because at the moment I find weight is probably the most useful. Now I've got to make the decision really. What do I get? Because I can't get Bola and Narcotic at the same time. But these two are the ones I want. I'm going to go for Bola. I find that's more defensive because if a Diflosaur does come at me I can chuck one of those at his feet and then make it easy killing for myself. So I've now shown you how to quickly level up. The next thing I wanted to show you in this video was how to make how to get your first tame. Now I could, although I have shown you how to get your first tame in the fact of a, a day of the dodo, that doesn't really count as it is just punching a dodo in the face and they are particularly weak. I would like to show you how to get your first useful dono, uh, dinosaur. In this case, I'm going to pick something called the Parasaur. It is the first one of the first dinosaurs you get a saddle for, the first being Fioma, which is like a pig. Fiomas are common, but not so common in this area, and they're not quite as useful as the Parasaur. Parasaur tends to be most people's first dinosaur. For the sake of the video, and not wasting your time, I'm going to be hopping back into creative mode. As I said in my last video, creative mode gives me infinite um, infinite stats, allows me to fly and such forth. You cannot have this on servers if you join, only on your single player. You may find that this ruins the fun for you, so use it at your own discretion. I'm using it here just to make teaching you that a bit easier. So, you'll notice in those levels I said that you can unlock narcotics and the wooden club and bolas. These are the first things you get when it comes to taming so that is what I'm going to be using in this video. I will create my wooden club. Now with taming with the wooden club they do break quite easy so I would advise having a couple just in case. You then want your bolas. I'm going to have a few of those 
as it's always wise in case you miss. It is very easy, especially if you're new to the game. The other thing you're going to want is you're going to want some narcotics. You craft those. I will I will show you quickly. You craft those in your pestle and mortar. I don't have a pestle and mortar in here, so I'll quickly make one. That is an early unlock. And you find that in crafting. Structures, crafting. Pestle and mortar is one of the first things you're able to craft. Now in a pestle and mortar, you are able to craft a various things. To begin with, you'll find you'll only be able to craft spark powder, or if you click consumables, narcotics. Narcotics use a mixture of five narco berries and one spoiled meat. So that meat you've got on you, that's got that green bar, when it turns green, don't throw it away. It does say mu this must have a use. Well, this is it. It is very useful for knocking out your dinosaurs. Now you may be wanting to get a large amount of spoiled meat and find that this is moving too slowly. Well, a tip that I, I use for getting lots of meat quickly is if you right click on the meat and click split stack and then split all. It's now turned this into individual meats, but they've kept the same spoil timer. So these will all spoil all at the same time. So I'll end up with I believe 10 spoiled meats at the same time whereas if they were in a stack it will spoil them one by one that goes for all items that have a spoil timer but as I said I've, I've, I've for the sake of video I'm making it fast I've made myself too many narcotics <laughs> uh, I've got my bollers which I'm going to place on my hotbar and my wooden club. Now it's time to find our prey. I'm going to equip my bola first, just in case I come across another dinosaur that is actually a threat. I want to make sure I'm prepared. I'm actually going to antagonize this Diplosaur and show you how to fight one. He's now seen me and he's chasing me. I'm running backwards and trying to dodge his attacks. I was hoping that he would try and spit at me, but it doesn't look like he's going to. Never mind. So with the bola, you can throw it at the dinosaur. Oh, there he goes. When he goes to spit, you try and move sideways. You'll see the bola is tied around his feet. That is only going to last a certain amount of time. So you want to get to the side or behind him and kill him as fast as possible. Or if you really want, you could knock him out. If you knock him out, the Diplosaur, being a predator, will eat meat to tame. Having a small predator isn't too bad of an idea. You can keep him in your base to help defend it, or perhaps follow you and be like a little dog to help protect you. Two is better than one, after all. Currently not seeing any parasaurs, which is what I wanted to tame. Maybe there's some over the water. But before you venture into the water, just beware, like most things in Ark, the water is particularly dangerous. You get fish in the water, like Colicanth, which are fine. They won't attack you, in fact, they'll give you fish meat, which is useful for cooking or taming some things. But you may find in the water that there are piranha. There isn't any here just yet. So it's not too bad. But I know that this water does actually have piranha in sometimes. We're looking for a parasaur. A parasaur, in case you don't know, is a dinosaur that's of medium size, a bit like this iguanodon, and it walks on its back legs, unlike the iguanodon. The parasaur is a particularly good dinosaur for transporting you. They can move quite, quite a long distance with the stamina, Without, before they tire her out. They uh, have an attack which is better than your fists. But at the same time I wouldn't recommend using them for attacking. I've come across a small dinosaur here. Or 
sea creature that if you do see, especially early on, I would advise stopping and killing it. This gives you a material that is quite rare at the beginning of the game. Although it doesn't give you a lot of it, you want it as much as possible. I've now killed it and I'm going to switch to my hatchet to get it. You see it gives you silica pearls, chitin and oil. Oil is generally found under the ocean or from some rocks in dangerous areas, hence why you don't find it that often at the beginning of the game. Chitin is like a shell um, substance which is used for crafting certain things. One of the most useful things early on is your first flying dinosaur's saddle which I'll be covering in a later video called a Tyrannodon. But you'll need a fair amount of chitin for that. So these things are very useful. And the silica pearls you won't be needing until much much later on but they are for electronics and again early on in the game they're not too easy to come across. I'm actually finding quite a lot of these trilobites for the first for unusually. This isn't often the case. There is another one and as I said I would kill it but for the second video, let's not have a video of just me killing trollobites. We really do want to find that parasaur. Although I'm finding lots and lots of trollobites, other which I said is uncommon, I'm not finding any um, parasaurs, which I said is common. That's just arc and the luck of the draw. Now this diff saw, although running away, I don't trust it, and I'm going to kill it. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to tame it like I said you could do. So I've got my wooden club, after I've followed it, and I've whacked it with my whack tip. Once it's unconscious, give it some of that lovely meat from the other Diplosaur that I killed earlier. Now, Diplosaurs tame much slower than Dodos. But they still don't take too long to tame. And it should be okay without me having to feed any narcotics. That dinosaur over there is a Pegamastix. They are very annoying and they will steal your stuff if they get a chance. If you see one... There you go. It's just stole my flint. You want to kill them to get your items back. Come back here. Now, something else you can do instead of killing them, if you do see one, you maybe you want to tame it. The best way to do so is to get those purple berries called metro berries and put them on the last slot I've actually knocked it out <laughs> with an axe um, you want to put the metro berries in the last slot of your hotbar so that when they steal they will they will always steal the item that's in your last slot it will steal the metro berries and it will start taming it now if you have enough metro berries in there it will tame it in one go There's another Pegamastix. It appears that it's actually robbed me without me realising. I'm going to see if I have any Metro Berries on me. I do. I'm going to put them in my last slot. Early on, it's probably not a bad idea to do this. That way, you know you're not going to accidentally lose a valuable item. I don't know what he's stolen, but I'm not that fussed. I'm still getting rather annoyed that I haven't come across a single parasaur. This is really unusual and I'm going to actually use the fly command to get to one quicker. You'll see actually in the ocean, believe me, the sea creatures showing you that the water is teeming with them. So be always be aware when trying to cross the water. That there is a Spinosaur. Very, very dangerous monster and a much later tame. It's crazy. One of the most common dinosaurs. And I can't actually see it. Although, why I'm here... Oh, no, it's just disappeared. Although, I am, I may be high enough level for this one. This is one of those crates. Ah, it just timed out, which is a shame. But those crates, they contain items. And as I said earlier, they have their different values.
This is actually rather bizarre how I haven't seen a single one of these parasaurs. I do, pr I promise you. Oh, here we go. They are very common. I do promise you that. Now, parasaurs are very distinctive. As I said before, they have large back legs and they, that they walk on. And they also have this head with like the large bit that sticks out, out through the back, which is used for ramming. Parasols are good for alert on PvP servers for alerting you when another player is nearby. Both of these are quite low level, but that doesn't mind. This is my first dinosaur after all. You throw the bollard to tie its feet up, and then you draw out your wooden club, and you whack it in the face. By doing this, you're adding KO damage. KO damage is what is used to knock them out. Certain weapons have better KO damage than others. Wooden club is the second worst of all the KO weapons. The worst being your fists. You'll see I've alerted the other one and he's running away. Now, the parasaur is a herbivore, so I want to be feeding it those purple berries. It will eat the other berries, except stim berries and, and narca berries, but major berries do the best work in taming. You'll see that in that one bite, it's gone up by 7%. Herbivores have a tendency to tame a little bit slower than carnivores. Not always, but mostly. But they also eat faster. So you need more of the item. Fortunately, major berries are a lot easier to get than meat. Go to a bush and I'm going to start gathering. It's always a good idea to make sure you have the food you need to tame beforehand. Although in some later tames where you need certain things like prime meat or mutton, you may find that it spoils before you've tamed. So you may have to knock out the creature, make sure it's safe, and then go get this. I'll cover that in a much later tutorial. Hopefully I've got enough now. So let's go Let's go back to my knocked out parasol, who's just taking another bite. So in that short amount of time, me gathering, he's now at 38%. I forgot I had them on my hotbar. I'll give it another three. He's eating the berries quite quickly, actually. So I am going to give him some of these, just in case. Because if there is no food in him, he will actually lose his taming effectiveness. And the taming bar will actually slowly go down. And I don't want that. Triceratops will be one of the first dinosaurs, one of the one of the first dinosaurs that you capture that sort of has particular use. He is one of the best berry gatherers in the game. I would actually say he's second uh, best berry gatherer next to a Bronto. In fact, Brontos gather so much that on even some servers they would rather you don't use them because they gather on the boosted servers. They can sometimes gather so much that it can cause the server to lag. But there's nothing wrong with a Triceratops. They gather a large amount, and they have uh, their attack is more like a circle attack. So it will it will grab all the berries within a certain circumference, whereas the Bronto is as a sweeping attack, and it will gather berries to the side of it. Although the Bronto has a l wider range, therefore it does gather much faster. The Bronto, though, is uh, you get the saddle at level. Uh, oh, I actually can't remember, but I, I think it's around 60. 60 b between 60 and 80. So it is a much later tame. Whereas the Triceratops, you get that around level 20. Conveniently, not too far from when you get Tranquilizer Arrows. Because there's you don't want to be trying to knock out a Triceratops with a wooden club. I'll probably cover taming a triceratops in my next video, where I show you how to build your first ever trap. That being said, if you go to my in, to one of my other videos, the taming raft, you'll find a tutorial on how to build a boat sp particularly good at taming early on in the game. I use that quite often. 
But in my in when I when I show you how to tame a Triceratops, I'll show you a standard trap instead. Now my Parasaur is tamed, but I want to ride it. I cannot. You ride it by learning an engram called a Parasaur Saddle. Being in creative mode, I've learned all engrams, but normally this would cost you some. So it's up to you whether or not you want to take that risk in using some some of your points to craft this saddle. It's arguable that you may not want to, as the parasol is only useful early on. I will craft one for the sake of showing you what they're like to use. As I said, it is the second saddle you unlock, next to Fioma. I've now crafted this saddle, and I want to put it onto my dinosaur. So to do that, you can either hold down E or press F to access the dinosaur's inventory. If you drag and drop to saddle, it will put it on, or if you just press E, it will equip it. If you press T, on the other hand, it will just put the saddle into its inventory. That's quite easily done, so if you go, where's, where's the saddle, check its inventory, you may have put it there. Now it's wearing a saddle, you can press E to ride the saddle. You may find you've all of a sudden got yourself an achievement at this point. My first dino. Or my f or ride or the first time you ride a dinosaur. As you can see, you sit upon the dinosaur and you can use sprint, which uses the dinosaur stamina, which is in the top right hand corner instead of the top instead of the bottom right, which is your stats. If you press right trigger uh, right click on the on the right on the parasaur He'll d try and detect to see if there's any enemies around. And he's lit up the fact that there is a Diflosaur over there. It's useful. To, it, that is useful if you're going in an area where you're worried that you might be coming across something and uh, you want to avoid. The left hand button on your mouse will do a standard attack, which is a simple melee attack. But using this attack, you can use it on some objects, like trees, and it, it's getting me thatch. Now, although that may seem useful, it, the rate of thatch gathering on a parasol is not great, so I would not advise it. I would, I would probably get that yourself. But you may find, until you get a Triceratops, he does a better job at getting berries. Although, you have to be fairly precise, it's quite easy to miss. Which is why you're going to want to get a Triceratops as soon as possible. Oh, I said, as I said, I'll be covering that in episode three. Now, normally you would have to ride this dinosaur all the way back to your base, and as you saw, my base is rather far away. I would suggest not venturing that far away from your base early on as you run the risk of dying, losing all your stuff, and it being a real pain to try and get it back. Try staying close to home, at least, beginning, at least to begin with. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, I'm going to be releasing many more, teaching you how to, how to play the game easily and effectively from start to finish. Take care, and perhaps check out my other videos. Is this a, if there's anything else you want me to cover or something you think you feel I've missed, please let me know in the comments. If there's something you want to particularly see in a tutorial of some kind, perhaps a build, let me know. Till then, take care.